The trip to Heathrow just gives you a, a window into the slightly zany world of the car industry. BMW is a car company obsessed with telling the world that it's all about efficiency at the moment. Joy, they call it. The joy of God knows what. And yet it's flying me to Munich to drive the 1 Series M development car for, wait for it, 20 minutes. So there you go. Munich and back, a day out, a few uh, quid's worth of ab gas, and I drive the car for 20 minutes. Okay, just arrived at the BMW press car test centre near Munich, which is where we're going to get ferried to go and drive the 1 Series M. On the plane, in an effort to be vaguely professional and not just sit and scoff free case, I thought I'd write down what I thought were some core M attributes that I'd want to see even in a baby M car. So here we go, my computer's in front of me. Starting with the styling stuff, because I think if anyone's ever owned an M car, there are certain aspects of an M car that they're boxes that have to be ticked, aren't they? They just have to be there. So let's start with the M rev counter. Got to be there. A different rev counter with an M in the middle. Illuminated M gear knob, that's all got to be there. It's got to have a different, more supportive seat. A different steering wheel, um, but not too thick, please, because it's got a bit crazy over the last few years. I think from the outside, the car's got to be discernible from its track width. You know, M cars just sort of have that look, don't they? The wheel arch, wheel relationship's got to be perfect. I think the E92 M3 isn't perfect in that respect. The canvas are key to this. I think it's got to have that extra neg at the rear, hasn't it? So the front wheels, sorry, the rear wheels are just a bit further in at the top and further out at the bottom. A bit of negative at the back gives it that stance. The exhaust boxes, they've got to be M exhaust boxes. Don't care if they're two or four, but they've got to have that larger diameter pipe. It's got to be straight, it's got to be black. It's just got to be that way, it's an M car. The driving experience, throttle response. I think M cars are defined by throttle response. And that's the big challenge with this car, because we know it's got a turbo motor. So I think throttle response is really important. Just four, we've got to click on it. We're doing like an k And you can drive it up on the top of the rev, you've got that response. Pretty much normally aspirated up at the top end. That is impressive. Steering. Well, M cars over the last 15 years haven't had an awful lot of feel in the steering, and I think we can forgive them doing that again. But it's still got to be very much M car steering. And by that I mean a power steering pump that gives you massive assistance if you happen to be on opposite lock. That's the great thing about M cars is that the steering weight doesn't seem to increase stupidly when you're right at the at the edge of lock, and I think that does work. Um, I think the steering's got to be accurate, but I'm not so desperate for sort of E30 style feel. That's a long time ago. I'd like it, but I don't think it's going to happen. The steering wheel rim is still just a bit. I don't know why these steering wheels are modern car companies. There's more to this steering than there is in an E92 M3, definitely. Although it's still a little bit remote, but then. engine sound, this is a real challenge for them because I think the induction and exhaust noise of an M car are two of the defining aspects of the vehicle. Quiet for an M car, but they have got some proper induction noise which is so difficult to get with a turbo mode. The ride, okay, M cars tend to be firmer in terms of their damping but ob oddly a bit more comfortable and certainly in recent years because they just think they've been more compliant, they've not had run flat tyres. So they've managed to make the suspension work harder rather than the tyre side wheel deflecting you all across the road. Speed damp feels like an M car again. It's got that firmness of damping that I really like. It's why I find these M cars more comfortable than I do some of the sported 3 Series, like a 330 IM Sport on run flats. Mm. I don't like the way that rides at all. But uh, M3s have always had that ride comfort and so does this car. So some first impressions on this new 1 Series M. Okay, they're not finished cars, but the one I was driving felt pretty near damn finished. It didn't feel turbocharged at the top end, I could whack the throttle. It felt like an M car from its steering to its damping to the way the differential seemed to dominate things through the corners. Um, struggling with a bit of induction noise doesn't worry me so much. Do you know what? It feels like a really good package. To me, it feels like BMW M is making a car that I feel it should be making and that all enthusiasts should feel it should be making. A return to form, can't wait to drive the finished object, um, hopefully before the end of the year, but doesn't need much finishing. And if the price point is right, this is going to be a car that everyone wants. It's a real enthusiast car. I'm excited, really, really excited.